Stand by to roll. The final stage of production. A filmmaker and sound engineer mix the tracks, voice, sound effects, music, to recreate an historic sequence in the development of sound motion pictures. Give me the tracks on 7, 8, 9, A, B, and C. Light me. Just lock up interlock, we're ready to go. Stand by to roll, I'll give you a cue. Okay, this is the uh, jazz singer. Effects A and B, music A and B, and effects. Dirty hands, dirty face, little devil, that's what they say. But to me, he's an angel of a joy. Whoopee, I found my boy. Mr. Watson. Come here, I want to. A development which is destined to create an entirely new art. That's very interesting. Are we going to have uh, music under main title? Uh, there are no titles at the beginning. We'll come oh, straight up with okay. the music, and that's later. Roll film, Arthur. Now we need to cue the narrator. Narrator coming up. It revolutionized an industry overnight. It was said the public would never accept it. It was hailed as the greatest invention of the 20th century. It was the living voice of the silver screen. It was sound, talking pictures. And the jazz singer, Al Jolson, made the birth announcement when he said, Wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Roll film. One of the first public demonstrations of a Vitaphone film was shown at the Philadelphia World's Fair in 1926. In the film, Alexander Graham Bell's assistant, Thomas Watson, recalled Bell's belief in the need for long-distance, two-way voice communication. This belief led, almost by chance, to talking pictures. During the months that we were experimenting on his telegraph, Bell often spoke to me of another invention that he was struggling with. It was the telephone. I remember my surprise when he first told me he expected soon to be able to talk by telegraph. Bell's discovery was a wave converter, a device that for the first time conveyed speech-like sounds by electrical means. Bell's idea was to force the reed to follow the voice vibrations instead of merely swinging to and fro. When we tried it, I could hear the sound of Bell's voice and could almost understand some of his words. Bell's early experiments with electrically transmitted sound laid the groundwork for everything that came after. By the turn of the century, Nickelodeons were giving way to the first theaters built exclusively for movies. And Thomas Edison was experimenting on the synchronization of picture and sound. But before films could be made to talk, five essential items had to be developed. Amplification, electrical recording and reproduction mechanisms, microphones, loudspeakers, and a method to synchronize sound to picture. Then, in 1912, in a laboratory at 463 West Street in Lower Manhattan, a series of tests were initiated on Lee de Forest's Audion, a tube that was found to amplify electric current. Following major improvements, in 1913, the Audion became the magic key that unlocked the door to a new scientific age. The race to revolutionize communications was on. A world war was brewing, and the importance of transcontinental communications was attracting scientists to the new field of electroacoustics, Talking pictures were not much thought about, but improved sound quality was. Therefore, it was decided to record sound for its use as a laboratory tool, and to do this, scientists would experiment with an old but non-commercial technique. 
the recording of sound upon film. Sue took father's shoe bench out. She was waiting at my lawn. I eat pea soup at 6.15. Sue took father's shoe bench out. In 1916 came one of the foundation stones on which sound motion pictures was built, the condenser microphone, which gave uniform response at various pitches in the audible range. And loudspeakers, which were in reality loudspeaking telephones, proved their worth. On Armistice Day, 1921, President Warren G. Harding delivered an address at Arlington National Cemetery. His words were carried over long-distance circuits to San Francisco and New York and were heard by more than 150,000 persons, the largest audience ever to hear a single speaker. By 1922, radio had developed its lusty voice and the public liked what it heard. That same year, the first electrically recorded talking picture was shown non-commercially. And although sound on film was eventually adopted, Discs were used first because the methods for producing them were well known. Also, discs of popular film music could be sold commercially. Yet by late 1924, practically every major studio in Hollywood had rejected the idea of talking pictures. The reasons were economic. They had large inventories of expensively produced silent films ready for release. High-salaried stars with long-running contracts had been trained to pantomime, not talk. There were foreign markets for inexpensively retitled silence. And studios were not equipped to handle sound. In any event, exhibitors could not run sound films. But the public, primed by the sound of radio, was curious. And Warner Brothers, whose losing battle with other major producers was driving them into bankruptcy, gambled on that curiosity and experiments with sound were initiated in the Vitaphone studio in Brooklyn, New York. August 6th, 1926. An anxious crowd jammed the Warner's Theater on Broadway to see the first feature film made with a synchronous musical background. From the opening credits to the last frame of film, music played from loudspeakers rather than from a live orchestra in the theater's pit. As Barrymore wooed beautiful Mary Astor, the public was transported on hearing this latest technological marvel. When the flashing blades of the Don and his villainous Borgia rival, played by Montague Love, were actually heard in combat, some viewers believed that live actors were fencing in synchronization, hidden behind the screen. In fact, it was the first example of post-dubbing in movie history. It was the fully synchronous short subjects on the program that prompted a Columbia University professor to state, no closer approach to resurrection has been made by science.
piece on him coming up. And on the same bill, Anxious to understand how the silver screen got its voice, animator Max Fleischer, in this 1929 film, created three characters, Mutie, Talky, and Dr. Western, to explain the phenomenon. Hey, Mute, what's the big idea of busting up my act? picture camera which is taking pictures through this window. We use a soundproof booth. When it's closed it keeps the camera noise away from the microphone. The camera is operated by a motor which runs at exactly the same speed as the motor in the sound machine. Whew, it's hot in this booth. Let's get out on the set again. This microphone changes the sound waves into electrical vibrations which are amplified here and sent along these wires to the mixer room. The sounds from the stage microphones are mixed here so that the, they sound natural for the action in the production. <coughs> Talkie, there goes your cue. You're next on screen, while Mutie can go try on his new voice. Okay. If there had been any doubt the year before, there wasn't after the night of October 6th, 1927. Al Jolson made the jazz singer and history when he appeared in a film that had been conceived as a silent drama to be interspersed with songs. But the ebullient Jolson ad-libbed the rallying cry that signaled an end to the silent era and the birth of talkie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Wait a minute, I tell you. You ain't heard nothing. You want to hear Toot 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 Toot? All right. Hold on. Hold on. Lou, listen. Play Toot Toot Tootsie, three chorus, you understand? In the third chorus, I whistle. Now give it to him hard and heavy. Go right ahead. Toot Toot Tootsie, goodbye. Toot Toot Tootsie, don't cry. The little Choo Choo Train, that takes me away from you. You don't know just how sad it makes me. Kiss me, pretty, and then, ow, ow. Again. Watch for the mail. I'll never fail. If you don't get a letter, then you know I'm in jail. Hey, hey. Don't cry, Tootsie. Don't cry. Excuse me, Tootsie. Goodbye. Nice Correct. and full. I right. love it. That really changed the history of movies, didn't it? Look this was the, the changing point. By January 1928, only 150 of the almost 20,000 American movie houses could show talking pictures. But within a few years, 15,000 theaters were okay for sound. It was indeed toot toot tootsie goodbye to the silent past and hello to the future. I got it. 